In this video, I'm going to be installing the tiles on my countertop. One of the first things that I did, actually the first thing that I did, was I pulled my stove out and I glued on these pieces right here, which form the nosing inside this space. And as you can see, I use a fairly uh, creative clamping solution, which just screws right into the side of the cabinet. This side of the cabinet will never be seen because the stove will be in there. I'll just patch those holes with a little bit of filler. Of course, I did the same on the other side here in the same way. What I used to glue the tiles on in this instance was polyurethane construction adhesive. A good heavy bead on the back and I pushed it in place and put these clamps on to hold it until it's set. So after I had those cut and glued on, I started cutting out the tiles for the top here itself. The tiles that I have are 12 by 24 and I could have laid those full size and then put little pieces in after. But I thought that that would look too strange to be honest on this small countertop. So I decided to go with a pattern. And this is commonly called a broken ashlar pattern. The size of the tiles are all pretty much different and the pattern itself is kind of random. I did a lot of the cutting on my tub saw outdoors with the diamond blade on it, especially for pieces that were narrow. I didn't want to take a chance on breaking them when using my regular tile cutter. And I used that for most of the straight cuts. After the cuts were made, I had to bevel the edge slightly with the diamond file so they won't be so sharp. And I'll actually match the other side a little bit better. I'm not gonna lie, it took a long time to make all these cuts and get the pattern looking well. I did start with a bit of a layout that I did in SketchUp beforehand, and that really helped out to get me started. I did make a couple of changes when I got around here, but that was more based on the tiles that I had left at the time. Uh, one of the trickier parts was cutting it around the sink. Now the sink is one of these composite ones, and what I want to do is have this, uh, the surface of the sink and the tile flush with each other. So I had to cut each corner so it would fit in there nice and clean. Now before I go any further, I just want to say that everything you see me doing here, I've already done before. My last house, I did the kitchen countertop more or less exactly the same way, except there was a lot more to it. And the end results, I think, were really worth it. It was a lot of work, though, and it wasn't cheap by any means. And that's the case here. I've got about 30, I think it's around 25, actually, square feet of countertop. Um, these tiles cost around $9 a square foot. That's for the tiles. Um, everything else that goes into it, it all adds up. It's not the cheapest option, but it gives you a look that's really unique. I mean, if you do this in your kitchen and you go next door to your neighbors, you're not going to see the same thing, and that's for sure. So like I said, I've got about 25 square feet of countertop here. So I ordered 30 square feet of tile, thinking that would be more than enough. And I wanted to do the nosing as well. And here's the detail. Basically, it's strips of tiles cut and glued on in the same way as I glued the other ones on. And as you can see here, I used some more creative clamping. I've got screws with cup washers holding the tiles in place, clamped in tight against the nosing until the construction adhesive cures overnight. So I cut these pieces this morning. I had to make a change to my tub saw. It just wasn't able to make accurate cuts like this and I want this to be consistent with all the way along. I really should have bought the table saw type tub saw to begin with but I think that one was on sale for like a hundred dollars off or something and I thought you know why not get that one. Okay now on to the real work. I got started by moving the tiles that were in this area down here and keeping them in the same arrangement so that I won't get mixed up. And then I went out and I mixed up some mortar, and this is just regular stuff, the cheap stuff. Like I said, I used it on my last kitchen, absolutely no problems. One of the acceptable substrates for this stuff is plywood, exterior grade plywood, so 
we're good there. And I take it out with my putty knife. I had a margin trowel that was fairly new actually that I bought to replace the one that I lost and the first time I scooped it in to get some stuff out to do something else it broke. So I'm feeling very ripped off there. I've also got a quarter inch by quarter inch uh, notch trowel to spread it. Okay, important to note that I'm not a tile guy, that's not my profession, but I have watched a lot of very talented ones <laughs> over the years working in uh, commercial construction. If you keep your eyes open, you might learn a thing or two. Just going to spread this out as evenly as I can. I don't want to spread too much of this. I do a small area at a time and then move along. It'd be great if they were all this big, cover a lot of area. But I've got to do things the hard way. What I do is I set it in tight up against the one before it, drop it down, and then pull it back over so that you know there's no mortar between the tiles. I push it down relatively firmly and get the next one. Now these tiles are really high quality. They are absolutely flat. There's no curl in them whatsoever, which is something you have to look out for for this size tile. The cheaper ceramic ones almost always have a curl or a twist, whereas these more expensive uh, porcelain ones don't. It goes really fast when you've already got the tiles cut out to the right size. There's no messing around. I'm just going to watch the gap between the tiles. I have these spacers, but I'm just eyeballing it here. One thing I don't want it to look completely perfect. That's not the what I was going for here. As long as they're nice and flat and even, you can feel that with your hands. Just by running them across the joints here. It's going to get a little bit on the tile here. Back butter it a little bit. Right on that ear where it's a little bit fragile going around that turn. Drop that one in. And the same thing here with the one on the front. Just a little bit more mortar right on that ear. thing I gotta watch is to make sure that I'm in the right place here on this angled part. I don't want it sticking out over and I want this to be nice and straight when they go in. Now across the back of the sink I've got a very small thin strip. I'm just gonna back butter that with just hunks of it basically enough to make it stick inside there. Let's get that in there. Try not to get any on the window trim. See if I have enough. It feels good. And then same deal across the front here. I got this one back buttered as well. One thing you gotta watch for is when you're pushing these thin ones down that you don't push down too much because you know it doesn't take a lot of force or as much force as these bigger ones do to get it down to where it needs to be. It's like the last tile on this part of the countertop. It went really quick. A little bit tricky keeping track of them even if you take them and put them aside. Still easy to. I can't put that one yet. Still easy to get mixed up a little bit. OK, 
Okay, looks like I messed up. <laughs> this is supposed to go here, and this one's supposed to go on the end. Uh, let's see, let's do the old switcheroo. That should be okay. Wrong again, my goodness. Okay, I had to go and look at the pictures I took after I had it all laid out to see exactly what I had done wrong. And I think I have it now. I'm pretty sure this one goes here. And then the piece that I forgot about is this one right here goes in here and then this one is up here this one goes in here I think and then this one will finish it up it really doesn't matter which way these two go Now I just need to spend some time going around and making sure everything is lined up and the gaps are all the correct size straight along the front here. When you run your hand along it like that it should feel flat and even and you'll easily see ones that are a little low or feel ones that are a little low and I think this one's low so I'm going to pull it out and put a little bit more mortar behind it the other way is to take a straight edge Long. and if you see anything high you know, just push down on the straight edge and that will push down the tile that's sticking up but everything here looks really good so I'm not going to worry about it like I say I'm not looking for perfection here but I do want it to look nice and flat and even now, I was going to take a break but decided to press on and get this done while I'm on a roll Role being, I haven't made any major mistakes other than a little bit of a mix up I did over there. That's not right. I spoke too soon, definitely. Some of these had to be cut, you know, I could say custom to fit in the places where I'm putting them. To get the spacing even, these tiles come in there 11 and 3 quarters by 23 and around 5 eighths. So I got a little bit of messing around to do to cut them to um, sizes that you know will fit with each other in this way. Anyway, all works out in the end. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Anyway, that's going to wrap it up for this one. Um, next time, I'm going to be grouting the tile. There'll be a whole video devoted to that. Not sure yet if it's going to be epoxy or if it's going to be the grout with the sealer mixed in. My preference would be epoxy, but availability is hard to get. I don't want to wait for another month to, you know, get the epoxy. The other stuff is pretty much right on the shelf. You don't have to order it. So, Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was informative to some of you. And we'll see you next time.